In the midst of winter, I found there was within me an invincible summer, and that makes me happy. For it says that no matter how hard the world pushes against me, within me, there's something stronger, something better, pushing right back. For years, I've wanted to live according to everyone else's morals. I've forced myself to live like everyone else, to look like everyone else. I said what was necessary to join together, even when I felt separate. And after all of this catastrophe came, now I wander amid the debris. I am lawless, torn to pieces, alone and accepting to be so resigned to my singularity and to my infirmities, and I must rebuild a truth after having lived all my life in a sort of lie. If absolute truth belongs to anyone in this world, it certainly does not belong to the man or party that claims to possess it. You will never be happy if you continue to search for what happiness consists of. You will never live if you are looking for the meaning of life. Blessed are the hearts that can bend, they shall never be broken. Don't walk in front of me. I may not follow. Don't walk behind me. I may not lead. Walk beside me. Just be my friend. I do not believe in God, and I am not an atheist. There can be no question of holding forth on ethics. I have seen that people behave badly with great morality, and I note every day that integrity has no need of rules. An intellectual, yes, and never deny it. An intellectual is someone whose mind watches itself. I like this because I am happy to be both halves, the watcher and the watched. Can they be brought together? This is a practical question. We must get down to it. I despise intelligence, really means I cannot bear my doubts. In the world, there is parallel to the force of death and constraint an enormous force of persuasion that is called culture. Nobody realizes that some people expend tremendous energy merely to be normal. Get scared, it will do you good. Smoke of it, stare blankly at some ceilings, Beat your head against some walls. Refuse to see some people. Paint and write. Get scared some more. Allow your little mind to do nothing but function. Stay inside. Go out. I don't care what you'll do, but stay scared as hell. You'll never be able to experience everything. So please do poetical justice to your soul and simply experience yourself. When you have once seen the glow of happiness on the face of a beloved person, you know that a man can have no vocation but to awaken that light on the faces surrounding him. The only way to deal with an unfree world is to become so absolutely free that your very existence is an act of rebellion.
A man wants to earn money in order to be happy, and his whole effort and the best of a life are devoted to the earning of that money. Happiness is forgotten, the means are taken for the end. Find meaning, distinguish melancholy from sadness, go out for a walk, it doesn't have to be a romantic walk in the park, spring at its most spectacular moment, flowers and smells and outstanding poetical imagery smoothly transferring you into another world, it doesn't have to be a walk during which you'll have multiple life epiphanies and discover meanings no other brain ever managed to encounter. Do not be afraid spending quality time by yourself. Find meaning or don't find meaning, but still some time and give it freely and exclusively to your own self. Opt for privacy and solitude. That doesn't make you antisocial or cause you to reject the rest of the world. But you need to breathe and you need to be. The evil in the world comes almost always from ignorance, and goodwill can cause as much damage as ill will if it is not enlightened. People are most often good than bad, though in fact that is not the question, but they are more or less ignorant, and this is what one calls vice or virtue, the most appalling vice being the ignorance that thinks it knows everything and which consequently authorizes itself to kill. The murderer's soul is blind, and there is no true goodness or fine love without the greatest possible degree of clear-sightedness. I continue to believe that this world has no ultimate meaning, but I know that something in it has a meaning, and that is man, because he is the only creature to insist on having one. People hasten to judge in order not to be judged themselves. In short, whoever does violence to truth or its expression eventually mutilates justice, even though he thinks he is serving it. From this point of view, we shall deny to the very end that oppresses true because it is revolutionary. It will be revolutionary only if it is true, and never otherwise. Man is the only creature who refuses to be what he is. You're worried about getting things successfully done in order to attain some degree of self-worth. Your soul is for sale. You most likely deceive yourself in order to convince yourself. Letting go equals failing, isn't that right? And you forget outstandingly well, don't you? You forget that it takes admirable courage, not only to try, but also to gracefully give up. Men are never convinced of your reasons, of your sincerity, of the seriousness of your sufferings except by your death. So long as you are alive, your case is doubtful. You have a right only to their skepticism. Beauty is unbearable, drives us to despair, offering us for a minute the glimpse of an eternity we should like to stretch out over the whole of time. We all carry with us places of exile, our crimes, our ravages. Our task is not to unleash them onto the world, it is to transform them in ourselves and others. We rarely confide in those who are better than we, rather we are more inclined to flee their society. Most often, on the other hand, we confess to those who are like us and who share our weaknesses. 
Hence we don't want to improve ourselves and be bettered, for we should first have to be judged in default. We merely wish to be pitied and encouraged in the course we have chosen. In short, we should like at the same time to cease being guilty and yet not to make the effort of cleansing ourselves. Every time I hear a political speech or I read those of our leaders, I am horrified at having for years heard nothing which sounded human. It is always the same words telling the same lies. And the fact that men accept this, that the people's anger has not destroyed these hollow clowns, strikes me as proof that men attribute no importance to the way they are governed, that they gamble, yes, gamble, with a whole part of their life and their so-called vital interests. I see many people die because they judge that life is not worth living. I see others paradoxically getting killed for the ideas or illusions that give them a reason for living. What is called a reason for living is also an excellent reason for dying. I therefore conclude that the meaning of life is the most urgent of questions. <laughs>